Hi everyone, I am Kartika Indandapani. This video is about the introduction to PyCentral, a Python SDK for Arbor Central's REST API. We will go through the installation steps, how to do REST API authorization and obtain access token, refreshing the expired tokens, how to make API calls and discuss ways to contribute to the PyCentral SDK. The content in this video requires understanding of the fundamentals of the REST API as well as object-oriented Python programming. All the commands and tasks in this video are executed in the Linux operating system. To get started, one would need a machine that can run Python 3. Python version 2 is not supported. The current version of the Python can be verified by the command python hyphen hyphen version. In the machines where multiple versions of the Python are installed, you might have to explicitly specify version number such as python3 hyphen hyphen version. Once python version is verified, let's install pycentral python package. A package in python refers to a collection of related python files that are placed in a directory. Package manager such as pip is the preferred way to install such published python packages. To check if the pip tool is available, enter command pip hyphen hyphen version or machines with multiple versions of python needs explicit mentioning of the version such as pip3 hyphen hyphen version use the following command to install pycentral make sure to use python3 based pip installer command to install the package is pip3 install pycentral to verify the installation use command pip3 show pycentral. The output of the command shows the version of the pycentral package. When this video is published, the version of the pycentral was 002. If you had previously installed pycentral package, in order to upgrade the package to the latest version, use hyphen hyphen upgrade option in the pip install command. The installation of the pycentral SDK is now complete. Next step is to gather the required information to make an API call. As we know, the REST API is a client server model where Arba Central is the API server and any machine making API call to Arba Central is the client. In order to make an API call, the client would need an authorization token, also called as access token. Aruba Central uses what which stands for open authorization. It allows the API clients to exchange information to the API server without sharing the general username and password. One can obtain access token from Aruba Central via user interface or REST API. Let's take a look into the user interface. Log into your Aruba Central account and select the API gateway page. On this page, the link in the API tab provides access to all the documentation of the available APIs. The hostname of the URL shown in your account on this page is where Aruba Central's API Gateway server is listening to API requests. Copy and save the hostname in this page. Next, enter System Maps and Tokens tab. This tab is available only for admin users. For non-admin users, select My Apps and Tokens tab. The difference between them is that the admin user can create multiple API applications whereas non-admin users is limited to creating one API client application. What does it mean by creating an API application, you may ask? It means to generate an identity for the API client making the API call. The API server, in this case Aruba Central, will generate an ID and secret for the API client. The API client should securely store this information and present it while refreshing the expired access token. To create a new API client, click on Add Apps and Tokens button. Enter an application name, then select Network Operations and click Generate. This generates an API client with the mentioned name. Aruba Central generates an API client ID and client secret for the specified API client. Copy and save the client ID and API client secret. Now let's move on to the access token section. Adding an API client via user interface would have also generated a new access token. Click on view token button for an API client to view the generated tokens for them. 
click download token button to view the access and refresh token in JSON format. Save this information. The generated access token will be valid only for 2 hours. The access token can be refreshed indefinitely. However, if an access token is expired and inactive for 14 days, then the token will be revoked by Aruba Central. In this case, one can either go back to the user interface and generate a new token for the API client or use the REST APIs from the API client to generate the access token. Either way, we will be adding a new token to the previously created API client ID and client secret. iCentral SDK simplifies this process based on the information shared by the user. In the first option, we will see how to generate the access token from the REST API. We need to provide username and password, API client ID and client secret, and the Aruba Central customer ID. To know the Aruba Central customer ID, click on the user icon in the Aruba Central user interface and you can find the customer ID as shown here. Upon providing all this information to Pi Central SDK, a new access token will be generated and stored inside a temp directory in a JSON file. In this method, the SDK has all the information to generate a new access token as well as refresh the expired access tokens. In case, if you don't want to generate the access token from the script and you do not want to share the username and password to an external application, then you can just share the client ID, client secret and the customer ID. This information will help in refreshing the expired access token. Since we don't provide enough information to generate an access token in this case, we need to copy and paste from the Aruba Central User Interface for the first time after which the script can refresh the token when it's expired based on the information provided in the temp directory with a file named in the format tok underscore customer id underscore client id dot json. So in this method, the token is cached locally as well as we have the ability to refresh the access token when it's expired. In the next method, we will provide the access token directly to the PyCentral SDK well, in this case, the token is not cached locally and we didn't provide any information to refresh or to generate the new token. This method works as long as the token is valid. Beyond this stage, the end user can implement their own token refreshing mechanism and supply the new tokens to the script as and when it's required. PyCentral SDK is object-oriented programming and therefore the existing functions to store and load and refresh the token can be further extended and overridden to implement the token management in external third-party applications such as AWS Cloud Key Management or like using HashiCorp Vault. Before we get started with actual code, let's explore PyCentral SDK's architecture. A class in object-oriented programming holds variables and functions which can be defined and called whenever it's required. In PyCentral SDK, we have something called a base class which all other functions and modules depend upon. This base class holds all the input variables that we provide to the PyCentral SDK as well as it has a generic function that can make any API call to Aruba Central's REST API gateway. There are other classes and modules defined in the SDK which makes use of the base class to make a specific API request. For example, let's say there is a function within SDK that can get the list of groups. In addition, we also have something called workflows. The workflows makes use of the base as well as the other classes and modules within the PyCentral SDK. It solves an actual use case or a workflow which involves multiple steps. An example would be renaming hundreds of access points. All right. Let's begin writing a Python script using PyCentral SDK. First, we will have to import Aruba Central base class from the base module within PyCentral package. PyCentral.base in the import statement implies that there is a file named base.py within PyCentral package from which we are importing the Aruba Central base class. Next, let's create a variable named central underscore info holding key value pairs, in other words, a Python dictionary. Let's update the values to the keys based on the information we collected from Aruba Central previously. In the next step, we are creating an instance of the class Aruba Central base and initializing it 
with central info variable. The variable name central holds the instance object. Next, we would want to define the API endpoint details such as endpoint path, HTTP method and any optional query parameters if required. To get this information, let's go to the API Swagger documentation from account home API gateway and click on the link in the API tab. Under the configuration URL dropdown, select get all groups. As we see here, the method is get and the endpoint path is shown here. And there are optional pagination limit and offset query parameters. Let's define this in the script. The next step is to call the command function via central variable which holds the instance of the base class. This function can make any API request to Aruba Central. As we can see that this function accepts standard HTTP requirements to make an API call such as API method, data, parameters and so on. We can also see that the function returns HTTP status code, payload as well as the response headers. Finally, let's print the response received from the command function. We are done with our first script. Let's execute this. We can see from the logs that first the PyCentral SDK tried to load the token from the cache. Since it was not found, it attempted to generate the new token based on the information we shared to the base class via central info variable. It was able to obtain the access token successfully and then it stored the access token into the temp directory for later use. The rest of the log shows the output of the command function. We see the status code of the HTTP response and the message section contains the HTTP payload we received in the response. We can see that this account has a total of 10 groups and all the group names are listed. The header section contains useful information such as API usage statistics. The X rate limit limit per day header shows the total number of API calls that are allowed for that particular Arba Central customer and the X rate limit remaining day header shows that the amount of remaining API calls that's available for the account for that day. Now let's consider the scenario where we don't want to provide the username and password to the PyCentral SDK. Without the username and password, PyCentral SDK will not be able to generate the new access token. In this case, we need to copy the access and refresh token from the user interface into the temp directory in the token file prefixed with tok underscore customer id underscore client id dot json file. This time, when we execute the script, I have purposefully provided the expired access token and let's see how the PyCentral SDK manages the scenario. We can see from the logs that the PyCentral SDK loaded the expired access token from the cached temp directory. It received a 401 error while making an API call and then the error says the access token is invalid or has expired. So the PyCentral SDK took an action to refresh the token and then it succeeded. It stored the updated token back in the cache file. We also got a 200 response code when it retried after refreshing the expired token. Now let's provide just the access token to the PyCentral SDK and see how it behaves. It will not be able to generate a new access token or refresh an existing token. The token will not be cached either. I am removing the temp directory to make sure that the PyCentral will not load the token from the cache and instead use the token that we provided. Upon execution of the script, we can see that the PyCentral log did not show that it's loading the token from a file like we've seen before. Rather, it directly used the token and made an API call. Well, it's not a good practice to hardcode the central info credentials and details into the Python script directly. So then we will have to create a file. We will in fact create a YAML file. It's easy to define key value pairs in a YAML file compared to a JSON file. And we can use all combinations like we discussed before like how we can ignore username and password or ignore all the information and directly provide the access token. All those things are possible with this as well. We have the utility function in PyCentral SDK that can take this YAML file and in return provide the instance object for the Aruba Central base class. So we will not be needing the central info variable as well as the instance object definition. We will now import 
get con from file function within the workflow sub package inside the workflows utilities module we can see that this function accepts a file name as well as an account name and then it returns the arba central base class instance object now let's go ahead and make a function call the output of the function will be stored in a variable named central which will have the instance of the base class let's fill in the input file name and the account name is the name that we have defined in the input yaml file this name is user defined and it could be any name according to the user's wish the idea is that the yaml file can hold multiple arba central accounts and then we can choose an account and the responding central info will be loaded from the yaml file let's rerun our script and make sure this utility function is working as expected our script passed and the utility function works great we are now back to the code and will make one final change rather than using the arba central base class command function and then directly providing the parameters payload path and method all these things can get complicated over time if you had to do this for every api call so we are going to use the predefined modules and classes that the pycentral sdk offers to make an api call in a simpler fashion well we do not have an one to one mapping for all available arba central apis to an equivalent module in pycentral sdk if the pycentral sdk doesn't have a module for an api call then you could use the command function in the base class to make that api call let's remove the command function call as well as its supporting variables to know all the available modules that are part of the pycentral sdk and its related documentation go to the pycentral read the docs documentation choose the configuration module from the index page you can see that within this module that there are multiple class definitions and our point of focus is group class all the api calls related to groups are available in this class there is a function named get all groups this function call could help us to get the list of groups from the aruba central we can see that this function accepts the instance of the base class as an argument as well as the query parameters limit and offset which are optional the function in turn returns the dictionary which is the output of the base class commands function let's get back to the code and import this module and the class let's create an instance object for this class and call the function get all groups the central instance object variable is an input argument to this function call we now have our final version of the code which looks much simpler and better compared to when we started let's execute this code and we got a successful response in this video we have learnt a lot about pycentral sdk and aruba central rest apis we have seen how to install pycentral sdk how to authorize and make an api call via pycentral sdk and finally we have seen how pycentral sdk manages the token expiry and how how it handles the refresh token mechanism we have seen multiple ways to make an api call like using the aruba base command function or utilize the existing pre written modules and functions if you see any issues with the sdk or you found some bugs or you wanted to request a new feature or you may be a person who wants to contribute to the sdk file an issue in the github py central repository if you have any questions and queries participate in the yahas developer community forum for documentation and uh, sample scripts visit developer.arubanetworks.com you can find the links to all the resources shared in the video below in the description we may have reached an end to the introduction but this is the beginning to your network automation journey with aruba central Thank you everyone for watching.